hello. Sunday night once again. It's a little afternoon night. Had a late, uh, had a late dinner. I feel pretty tired. Nothing going on in this Buffalo Worcester game. Uh, both clubs starting eleven and seven though. Uh, so yeah, I'm hitting this a little later on a Sunday night than I would typically. But but here we go. Scranton and Rochester. Yankees and Nationals. Luis Garcia, two for four. Not prospect eligible anymore. But definitely still a guy of interest. Carter Keyboom, 0 for 4 with the strikeout. He's hitting a buck 90. Corey John Park, 2 for 4. Hitting just a shade under 400. I don't feel like I've seen his name in the AAA box score. They frame very often. Um, let's see. Man, Jacksonville, 13 and 5. Norfolk, 4 and 14. This is the. Marlins and the Orioles. Jesus Sanchez, another multi-hit game. He's still hitting close to 500. Wrote about him last week. And how, like, with Lewis Brinson continuing the struggle and Sanchez being a better platoon fit with, like, Adam Duvall, who's not exactly lighting it up, that they should, they should like, give Sanchez a chance soon. Mason McCoy hitting 292 for five. Eliezer Hernandez, a nice outing in Triple A. I'm kind of an Eliezer guy. Really great on mound athlete with a changeup. As a minor leaguer, anyway, I think he's, he's become more slider heavy since he was Rule 5. Lehigh Valley and Syracuse. Syracuse, pretty lousy, 4 and 14. Iron Pigs, 11 and 7. Austin Leasty, 3 for 5, older guy who made some noise in the mid minors in 2019. Not really for me, but you know, some people like guys who perform like that. A little less uh, fixated on how old they are. Billy Falter, really great outing. Five innings, seven strikeouts. He's got a 2 4 1. And uh, yeah, Billy Falter. Billy Falter is a guy that you're going to want to know about um was injured in 2019 was still under rule five consideration for a bunch of teams teams checked on his medical you can like check on a couple guys medicals um here's falter i've got him 12th in the philly system do think there's some helium here um yeah had elbow issues in 2019 ended up not going in the rule five then there was no 2020 season maybe it was good for this guy uh, to come off the elbow strain with like extended rest and then was a monster during 2020 instructs and they uh, they had to 40 man him so he's pitching pretty well so I'm going to square off Billy Falter here as a candidate to write about other interesting stuff notable in the Phillies box score here is like uh, Kyle Doey, who's got good stuff, is really struggling. And walk two guys. Mauricio Lovera, two walks in two innings. Let's see how Lovera is doing. This is another one where, at one point when he was in high A, clear water, Lovera was like three to six with a plus change and a plus slider, and then has dealt with some injury stuff, moved to the bullpen. Velo didn't really explode there. 12 strikeouts. Three walks and nine innings so far, so two of those walks were today. Okay. It's good to see him performing. If he were really looking dirty down there, then he should just be up right now. Um, but he's performing. So that's good to see. Syracuse, Kilo May, no strikeouts in five and two thirds. That seems bad. Okay, moving on. Columbus and Toledo. Toledo drubbed them. Oscar Mercado, Oford hitting a buck 64. Who would have guessed that that could have happened? Two for five effort from Gabriel Arias. Note that Owen Miller, who I wrote about last week, is not in this box score anymore. He has been called up. We'll see how permanent that is. Isak Paredes, two for five. Two strikeouts, though. Feels like we see, say his name a lot in the, uh, in the old box score rundown, but his numbers are not. Ridiculous or anything. Alex Lang sent down. 
he had a perfect inning tonight. If you would have told me that he would have struggled um, after the way he looked during spring training, I would have told you that's he's crazy, but here we are. All right, so here for Columbus, this is Justin Garza. Pretty sure Justin Garza, formerly of Cal State Fullerton, was a pretty good college prospect at Fullerton and started to deal with some injuries and part of why he fell to round eight in the 2015 draft. It's like getting to be quite a while ago now. Doesn't feel like that long ago. Uh, five outings, nine innings, 11 strikeouts, six walks. So not like blowing the doors off as a 27-year-old. Was once a, was once a real name, though. So there's Jordan Stevens, who we saw rehab. I actually think that at some point here during this episode, you'll see some video of Jordan Stevens. Let's put some backfield video in here for you guys. We'll get to that when when it comes up at the end. But yeah, Jordan Stevens was rehabbing down in the down in extended earlier in the week. I caught him. He didn't look great there. Um, upper 80s. Omaha and Iowa. Edward Olivares, four for five. Valoria homered, Oliveras homered, Rehab and Hunter Dozier, two for five. Uh, nothing really going on on the cubby side of the ledger. Alec Mills got shelled. Mike Rucker, once upon a time, was rule five of the Orioles, two and a third out of the bullpen, pitched okay. All right, let's move on. Louisville and Memphis. This is the Reds and the Cardinals. Big night in Memphis. Good dub for my Grizz. All right, Michael DeLeon, two for five. He homered. It's number two on the year for Michael DeLeon, former Rangers prospect, one of those guys who was more advanced than he is really toolsy. Got to the upper minors as a teenager and sort of stalled out. Libby, Matthew Libertor, four innings, four earned, five strikeouts and a walk. So peripherals look good. Give up the four runs, though. Tony Santillan still running a 1.86 ERA. This start not as dominant as a lot of the ones that we've seen leading up until now. Jose De Leon, an inning and two-thirds, four strikeouts out of the bullpen. Kind of disappointed in how he has looked coming out of the gate for the Reds, which is saying something considering that most of the other Reds minor league arms have kind of Exploded. Surprise, surprise. Really not. Considering who they hired to do <laughs> minor league development. It's the guy who wrote the, the New Testament on it. Uh, Gwinnett and Nashville. This is Braves, Brewers. Drew Waters, 267 now after a really hot start. One for four with two punch outs last night. I'm going to skip doing the, uh, the old Drew Waters uh, plate appearance check. Just one hit for Gwinnett tonight. It belonged to him, so hard to knock him. Uh, who did this? Who did this work for for National? Well, it's Aaron Ashby, unsurprising top ranked prospect in the Brewer system, according to Moi. Um, like Ashby a lot, probably as a power reliever. Tucker Davidson, six innings, nine strikeouts. This guy looked like hell during the spring, man. Or maybe it was during spring training 2.0 last year. Like he just looked kind of like out of shape and dumpy, and his stuff did not have good bite. He's been on a tear this year. Four walks, 20 innings, 23 strikeouts, um, only eight hits allowed, has a sub one ERA so far. So uh, this is my group right now, these three guys to write about here as we sort of round the bend of uh, AAA games. Salt Lake and Las Vegas. Let's see, Joe Adele, two for four, not prospect eligible anymore. But um, nice to see him playing well. It's his ninth homer. He's got two tonight. Um, another one hitter here. This is the A's in Vegas. Just one hit on a getaway day, I guess. But like, kind of surprising in Vegas. How about Packy Fackin Naughton, dude? Packy Fackin Naughton, dude. Two base runners and seven and two thirds for Packy. Velo was way, way, way down last year, so. He's one to ask about just because of where the velo has been. Uh, Parker Dunshee, another back-end starter guy I like in Oakland. Uh, cutter, command, you know, like kitchen sink type righty. 
uh, Vegas is not the place for the guy for a guy like this, you know. Um, it's not good for anybody, but it's definitely not good for a guy who throws 89. Uh, but good start from him tonight, obviously, getting shelled in general. Jordan Weems, a converted arm, who I like as a, a solid middle reliever, has been up down the last couple of years. Here he pitched a good ninth inning, two strikeouts, no base runners there. Let's move on to Indianapolis and St. Paul. Uh, this is Pirates and Twins. So Pirates, Cabrian Hayes back on a rehab assignment, two for four. He homered and doubled. He DH'd, so he's a candidate to be written about for tomorrow's daily prospect notes. Ben Rortvet, two for four over here, made his big league debut earlier in the year. A really physical catcher, has sort of a backup vibe about him. Uh, and then Griffin Jacks from Air Force, the Air Force Academy. His was an interesting, you know, we've seen some of the service uh, academy kids have complicated pro developmental tracks because of their uh, service commitment and whether it could be like circumvented or not. And um, I forget the specifics of how things have gone for Jax. He's generally had an uninterrupted career um, and pitched okay. Like he's just you know logged a ton of innings in the minors basically as a as a starter all the way to the up, upper levels. Uh, the most I saw him at length was in the 2018 Fall League, probably. I don't think it was 2019. I think it was the 18 Fall League. And yeah, he had like that fringe 40-man look. Uh, anything else going on here? Shea Spitzbarth, this is minor league rule 5 guy by Pittsburgh, who I dig. He has a really good changeup. Uh, Braden Ogles had a velo spike. One and two-thirds from him. Two walks, though. Four punch-outs. But this was a lefty who was into like the mid-90s touch of seven as a really young pro and then kind of lost that and now that's back um, not a lot else going on there but lefty with that kind of arm strength is interesting Oklahoma City and Albuquerque off to rough starts both of them uh, Tony Gonsolin three innings to open this one up three innings one hit no walks three punch outs for him so that's good uh, Andrew Schwab here in the middle of the box score had a rough outing. This is one of the guys with like one of the higher spin rates of all time. Uh, was like of note long ago before everyone just, you know, was first thirsty for quantifiable spin and it just doesn't, this guy just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Um, he's not really pitched especially well. Uh, but um, does have big, big spin. There's a lot of runs scoring in this one. We had Bellinger rehab, one for four, it was a bomb. McKinstry rehabbing, one for four. Kybert Ruiz, three for five, he's hitting 308. I think uh, he's probably a trade chip. Um, nice to have a guy like this around, but uh, and maybe Austin Barnes will split and they'll just timeshare Kybert and, uh, and Will Smith, but I think that Kybert's an everyday catcher, man. Like Certainly not everything he does has that look, but uh, game is slow to him, and he makes a ton of contact. Sam Hilliard, two for five. Um, you know, Sam Hilliard's a high variance guy with with monster tools. He's gonna strike out some. Uh, at times, it's gonna be unplayable, and that's where we are right now with him. Mitchell White, you know, whatever. I'm not a big Mitch White guy. All right, Reno and Sacramento. Reno, twelve and four. Uh, let's see. So this is uh, the D-backs and the Giants. So Nick Heath, who they acquired from Kansas City, and I think it was was it just off of waivers or was it a small deal? I forget. Speed Demon guy who was a stopgap during some of their injury problems. Two for five, three strikeouts for him. Uh, Zach Lee got the start over here. Former like two sport guy. Uh, yeah, Bryant Johnson. This is a guy who I wrote about, uh, or, excuse me, Bryce Johnson, yeah, from Sam Houston State. Guy who was a swing change, uh, you know, contact speed as a center fielder in college at Sam Houston State. Was way, way older than is typical for um, you know, college pro or any kind of draft prospect, really. And has done okay, but no power just because the swing really didn't allow for it. Has, has had a swing change. Some of this is definitely the hitting environment in the old... Pacific Coast League is very offensive friendly. Um, but this guy's different now. 
this strikeout total here is is kind of scary. Um, we are talking about a guy with a new swing, so all the stuff needs to be monitored and, and viewed in the context of the hitting environment and uh, the old PCL parks, basically. Uh, but I'm just, you know, this is a guy to monitor just because of the swing change, so I'm keeping tabs. Uh, none of the other guys, some of these older types, Jason Vossler, Jake McCarthy, uh, you know, Justin Bohr, you know, all-star team once upon a time. You know, these guys might get an opportunity if the Giants ever, like, bottom out the way I've expected them to uh, for, like, the last couple of years. But instead, they just compete, compete, compete. Um, that's where we're doing that. We're doing that dance again where the Giants are, like, surprisingly good. It's like they've been surprisingly good for three years. How long are we allowed to be surprised by it? Round Rack and Tacoma. This is uh, the Rangers and the Mariners. Yanni Hernandez, a favorite of mine, contact oriented switch hitter, multi positional guy, not a lot of power, 0 for 3, 2 walks. He is down 277. Little Delano de Shields, 1 for 5. Uh, Jason Martin, 2 for 4. A uh, guy who's like a fourth outfielder type from originally like with Pittsburgh and stuff. Or no, he was originally Houston and then became Pittsburgh. Um, he's made his way here. Andy Ibanez, who had a really hot spring, uh, has not continued that so far at AAA. A lot of these guys are names here. Carl Chester was a player to be named later in that deal with the Rays, that, that Nate Lowe, uh, like Heriberto Hernandez, Swap. Uh, Carl Chester was a player to be named later in that one. He's hitting 310 at AAA right now. There's Leo Tavares. Still under the Mendoza line. Same for Anderson Tejeda, hitting buck fifty-one. One of these is surprising, and one of them is not. Although again, like sort of like the inverse of the Giants, right? Like Leoti uh, was fantastic when he was a seventeen or eighteen-year-old in the AZL, and then basically has never performed since then. And we all have been waiting for it, and it's never happened. Uh, another rough outing for Brock Burke, whose ERA is over twenty. It might be over for him. Definitely not healthy, or his stuff is gone, or whatever. But uh, this was once an interesting, like, 4-5 uh, starter candidate who's now doing this. Um, so that sucks, pitching man. And then on the Como side, hey, Taylor Tramiel, 4-4, four, 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 he's hitting 5-12. Uh, like, demanding, basically, to be reinserted into the big league lineup. And then here's Luis Torrens, who was recently demoted. And that's it for this one. We got two AAA games <clears throat> left. This is Charlotte and Durham. Bruhan 0 for 4, down to 320. Wander Franco 1 for 4, triple. Brett Sullivan, catcher I like, um, as one of these like upper level depth type guys in case of emergency. Just liked what I saw from him bat to ball wise over the winter in uh in the Dominican. Um here he is playing left field, just a 27-year-old catcher, other utility, and he's got, you know, this career line um, for a catcher. That's pretty good. So I kind of like um, Brett Sullivan as, as what he is, which is, you know, like doing this up here at AAA. Uh, Josh Lowe, another guy who's close to 50th overall on my top 100 list in right field tonight. Uh, converted high school, you know, shortstop and then third base. Where is he going to go? We don't know. You know, power, speed, frame, strikeouts. Uh, turned out as he entered pro ball that there were a lot of walks too. That, like this guy has a really good feel for the strike zone. That was a sort of hid, hidden skill of his while he was in high school. And you're just like more looking at the body and the tools. Um, but uh, I dig him. Center field, power, speed, walks. Definitely going to strike out, but think that there's enough other stuff happening. Wonder if he or um, Bruhan would get the call first. Like, you know, there's a lot of misdirected uh, hype about who's going to get called up and when and stuff. And um, I wrote earlier in the week about... Uh, If something were to happen to Willie Adamas, who, you know, look, they were trying to trade Willie Adamas all offseason. Uh, because this, even though Willie was really hitting well, the strikeout rate was was terrifying. I'm on Wallace's page now, not, uh, not Willie's. But, like, you know, the Rays correctly thought that Adamas might bottom out offensively, and he did. And um, 
Other teams, I think, feared it too, which is why you didn't see him actually move. And then said he moved for two relievers, who I think are okay. I'm not a big JP Fire Eisen guy. Uh, wait, why is Taylor Walls not tagged in the um, in that daily prospect notes? That's not great. That's uh, what are you gonna do? But anyway, in um, daily prospect notes from last week. I wrote that, yeah, like, if something happens to Adamus, if he gets hurt, like, this is the guy, just because it's such a clean fit. Like, he does what Adamus does, except he makes contact. He doesn't have the same ceiling as Willie did, um, and still does, just because the power is not there for walls. It's like doubles. But he's, like, Willie is a six glove at short, um, and, like, Adamus is also, like, a great team guy. Uh, all right, let's see. Drew Strotman, clunker for him. His first one, he was dominant in his last several outings. Brent Honeywell Jr. still hasn't allowed an uh, unearned run in AAA. Good for him. Last AAA game here, El Paso and Sugarland. This is the Padres and the Astros. Two Capita Marcano in the leadoff spot. Two for four, only hitting buck 56 so far. Uh, Brian De La Cruz in the leadoff spot for Sugarland. He's another one who were the box scores the first couple weeks were nuts. Uh, one for four tonight, still hitting just under 400, though. Fromber Valdez, another rehab outing. Not a lot of punch outs for him, but, you know, this is a good outing. Uh, man, Sean Dubin, six strikeouts in four innings. Sean Dubin's stuff is real, too. Um, just another one of these mid 20s guy. I'm cautious about undervaluing them just because of their age, because the reality is that this guy doesn't have to be on the 40 man until December. And so you just have him for his prime. Like you still have six years of control over this guy who has real shit. Um, like maybe back of the bullpen stuff, he's going four innings at a shot here and is punching out 12 dudes for nine at triple a, like the walks are not, the best right but in a in a multi-inning relief role you've got some room for that you can work inefficiently once through the lineup and like still and still dominate guys enough with your stuff that you're you walk a couple guys you're still getting out of it so i'm a sean dubin guy he's high on the astros list is 40 plus future value tier is uh this is an impact tier you know this is not this is well away from the top 100 but it still is like a potential impact big leaguer in my in my opinion um so you can see like he's i've got forrest whitley and sean dubin just in the same in the same category as you know tyler ivy made his big league debut this week and stuff like all, all these guys i think are flawed yes but like um still useful still really good all the good baseball players are are still flawed mike trout's not a great center fielder all right not anymore. Uh, okay, Altoona and Harrisburg. This is the Pirates and the Nationals. Slowly seeing signs of life from Bay. O'Neill Cruz, one for five. No power in this outing from him. How's Amaral doing? You know, we see him a lot in here with multi hit games. He's playing up the middle position. He's in the two hole. Hey, Archibald. I'm sitting outside again. It's 12.36 p.m. now. How's it going, buddy? Is your collar still on? He doesn't appear to have been in a fight. Okay. Rodolfo Castro playing third base tonight. That's interesting to note. Jackson Reitz, two for five. Once touted, like, high school catching prospect. Jackson Reitz. Uh, I also smell weed. Somerset and Hartford. It's not me. It's from Somerset and Hartford. Uh, wow, look at this. Early early game onslaught from the Patriots. Michael Beltre, a guy who, um, while he was with Cincinnati, gosh, I really loved, uh, I really loved Michael. I think he did, I think he had his car on and it's gone now. Like, so something maybe happened to him. And, uh, hey, come here. You're all right, dude. Let me see. Sorry, folks. I just got to... Come here, come here, come here. Uh, 
Your right, pal. <laughs> yeah, like a goopy eye. <laughs> Alright, well, he seems okay. Uh, Michael Beltre, like I said, it was like, you know, very physical, uh, athletic guy who was with the, um, the Reds early in his career and had like an unusable swing and maybe seemed like he was a, a swing change away from the breakout and just never happened. Uh, so he's with the, he's, yeah, he's now sort of kicked around, um. All right, anyway, yeah, Amaral, let me double check on this here. All right, so he's not slugging like crazy. Yeah, his peripherals are okay. He's probably someone to check on. I mean, he's 24. I'd really like to see him get pushed to triple A, just to see how real it is. But, like, really, when you're 24, like, you got to be in the big leagues. Right, so the Hartford kids, a um, bunch of one-fers in this box score. Nothing crazy going on in the uh, in the pitching lines. Bowie, thirteen and four for Bowie. Wow. Richmond ten and eight. Zero for four. Two strikeouts for Heliot Ramos in the top one hundred. There's Andy Suhilio, three twenty six. Uh, that's pretty interesting for Suhilio. Uh, Adley Rushman, three for four with a home run. Take Adley aside. Another big strikeout outing for D.L. Hall. Diogenes Salmango, who threw in the ninth, has, has big arm strength too, but his, his secondary stuff is not great. Uh, speaking of guys whose secondary stuff is not great, Sean Jelly, five and a third, eight strikeouts, just five base runners, no earned. That's definitely his best outing of this year so far. Okay. Binghamton and Erie. Let me take a look at my boy DL here. I'm a big DL guy. All right, so he did have a clunker on the 16th. He had a week off between starts after that. Okay. Okay. Ryan Kreidler in this uh, Binghamton and Erie game. Four for four. Still under the Mendoza line. Crazy in the pitching lines. Portland and New Hampshire. Red Sox and the Blue Jays. How is Jason Rosario doing? He's never been a high batting average guy, but he's a high OBP guy. Like, what happened to your jawline, Jason? Alright, so as you can see, like the OBP piece is still here, but the slug is not. Um, and is like Dipping even further, I'm not sure that this is going to, it's not a great uh, vibe from young Jason Rosario, although he's a 21-year-old at double A. Uh, Tristan Costas hit a bomb, saw the highlight of that. If you did not, you should go find it, go seek it out. He hits the crap out of one. It's a big lead dinger for sure. Ooh, I'm guessing Elvis Luciano got hurt in this one. This is the Willie Gaston guy that they was throwing, yeah, in low A. Was he rehabbing, I guess? He was throwing really hard down there in those low A games that are, that are track manned. Biloxi, Tennessee. Whoa. Archie might have been rubbing himself on something weird now, like where Archie was sitting in the yard. Now Francis is over there, and she's like smelling where he was sitting and like rubbing herself in that spot. Like, what the hell? Cats are so weird. Oh, my fingers don't smell weird after touching Archie. <laughs> Biloxi in Tennessee is Milwaukee and uh, the Cubs. So Swarmer, it's time to check on Matt Swarmer. Archie, come here again, dude. No, you look fucking fine, but like your collar's gone. So what happened? 
Did I just forget to put it on you before I let you leave? Um, nothing really going on in this box war. Just Matt Swarmer continues to have, like, you know, a surprisingly good career for an older guy from a, from little Kutztown in Pennsylvania. Um, it's not like Kutztown's not put out any athletic talent in their history. Andre Reed, the, uh, the Bills Hall of Fame wide receiver, went there. I think did John Mobley, the... Uh, did John Mobley, the, the Broncos linebacker, did he make a Pro Bowl? Uh, he's from Kutztown, too, though. Um, but, yeah, like, look at, you know, here's Swarmer's line for the year. He's, he's doing this at double A. Obviously, he was sort of demoted. But you can see that in the past. Like, this guy's done this, you know. He's performed. He doesn't walk anybody. Uh, more than a strikeout in an inning for the first couple of years of his career before he reached triple A. And so... Yeah, like, does this guy, I think that he's been Rule 5 eligible at this point. Yeah, he has been, but, like, does this guy have, should this guy be in, like, Korea or something? I think he's an interesting one. Uh, Brian Hudson, Ben Leeper, these are some of the Velo Spike guys from camp. Who Leeper, you can see, just if we're looking at the ERA, it's for relievers looking at the ERA this early in the year is kind of dumb, but, like, you know. You can see the gap there. Reading and Akron, 13-1 to Akron. Reading three and fifteen, Akron twelve and five. So Jose Fermin's moved into the leadoff spot. Did they have a lefty starting? No, it was MacArthur. Um, so yeah, like Richie Palacios in center field. That's an interesting development. Maybe worth writing about that. Uh, I guess I do smell something kind of weird. Okay. Juan Hillman, once upon a time, an interesting high school prospect. Velo really took down. He's performing, just not striking anybody out. Like, you know, he's not allowing runs, rather. He's just not striking anybody out. Uh, Trenton Brooks was a two-way guy at Nevada that I kind of dug. Two for three with the home run. Definitely a dude with, like, big balls like on the field. Like, he's as confident as... Jonathan Papel, you know, like, doesn't care if he's the 12th best guy on the field, which he probably is in this, like, you know, in a double-A game. He doesn't give a shit. He brings it. Um, Arkansas and Corpus Christi, Jordan Cowan, hitterish, you know, kind of soft-bodied, shift-aided infield type guy who I've sort of been on as, like, an interesting depth sleeper. Uh... He's in his mid twenties though, like realistically not gonna happen. But two for four in the leadoff spot here. Uh, what, Archie, what did you get into, dude? Fran is like kind of standoffish as a cat, and definitely is like running away from Archie often when he wants to play with her and she wants no part of him because he has like eight pounds on her. But she is like up in his grill right now because of whatever he smells like. Where have you been, dude? <sighs> All right. I'm going to keep going here. We're still at double A. Wichita and Tulsa. Jose Miranda was off to a way, 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 way hot start. Kind of coming back to earth. One for four. Uh, do you like him, though? I think he's like one of those role-playing bats. Michael Grove, guy who was drafted out of West Virginia, even though he didn't play his junior year. By the Dodgers here, three and two-thirds with seven punch-outs. Today, a bunch of offers on the Dodgers' side. Another just one hitter over here. Uh, I don't know. I think the natural question to ask is um, what kind of ball are the minor leaguers using now that the big league ball has changed? And the, I don't know. Uh, all right, so Amarillo and Midland. So it was in Amarillo. Both these teams close to 500. Alec Thomas, two for four. Who is this Reynolds? Is this Matt Reynolds? Mikey Reynolds. Braves. He's from Pennsylvania too, huh? 
Texas A&M, 2013. He's 30 years old. He's in double A. He has not played baseball in five years. That's kind of interesting. Maybe Archie was rubbing himself with something weird and like his collar came off. His collar comes off often when he's in a fight, but then when he's in a fight, he also likes, he looks beat up and his fur has all kinds of tufts. Tufts. And he looks clean, like. Yeah, seems fine. Delvin Perez, two for four here for Springfield. Uh, Bobby Witt, two for five, hitting 235. Two strikeouts for him. MJ Melendez hit two bombs in the DH spot. He's not doing bad. How about that? I wonder what the strikeout rate's like. But it's good to see him playing well. Uh-oh, Jonathan Boland get hurt. Jonathan Boland, the gigantic righty from Memphis. Um, sinker, changeup, you know, secondary. The breaking balls are both sort of okay. Uh, but, you know, mid to upper 90 sinker and a good changeup with strikes. Uh, all right, so MJ Melendez... For the athletic high school catcher uh, from the 2017 draft, power, arm strength. Dad is a coach. He got a reputation for being like an advanced defender, and he is a field general type, but the, the actual like receiving the baseball part is not good. More walks and strikeouts so far for MJ. All right. He's going to get written about, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chattanooga in Mississippi. Alejo Lopez continuing to hit. Like, I don't know what to think about Alejo at this point. Um, I guess it's been so long since I really sat and thought about him just because he's been an older guy for quite a while. And the fact that he's 25 and at double A is like, you know, come on. But he really is hitting. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Pardon. It's nice to sneeze and know it's not COVID. I mean, I guess I don't know it's not COVID, but it's probably not COVID. Uh, you guys hear that? I don't. That sometimes we hear those have those loud bangs in the middle of the night. I don't know what they are. All right, uh, Frisco and San Antonio. They're like way off in the distance. They sound almost like a gunshot, but. They're definitely not a good shot. It's like too big and loud and like heavy and low. Uh, AJ Alexi, three innings, three perfect innings. There's an opener here. This is a guy who's also going to be in that like 40 plus range um, as a likely like power reliever. Uh, have they been using him? It's sort of weird to see him stretch out as a starter like that. All right, so he's been using these types of outings. Yeah, I dig it. This is, I think if they could get it, him to be used this way, that would be great. Um, he does have like big upper 90s velo and a power breaking ball, and they don't play as well as you think given that stuff. Like there's some other suboptimal traits this is one of those things if i'm going to pull up my track man data from like 2019 and go to the upper level pitchers and like sift through them by vertical movement i'll just leave it on the rangers here this is one of the drawbacks so if i'm going to sort this by like vertical movement All of these numbers, basically anything above, like average is like eight or nine, and all these guys being above average, and really more so all of these guys being like elite, basically, like 70 and 80 grade vertical movement on their fastball. Some of these dudes definitely have that, um, or something approaching it, like Demarcus Evans for sure does. And Cole Uvula, I buy, he does. 
but a bunch of these other guys, while I can see like Josh, Ad Josh Advocate has a vertical arm slot and like Ricky Tyler Thomas has always um, like been interesting and outperformed his, his velo and stuff. Like to say that they're at the very, very top of the scale is wrong. This is a miscalibrated unit. This is like down east. Guys who pitched it down east are getting overvalued here. Um, and Alexi's in that bucket. All right. Montgomery and Birmingham. Um, let's see. Nothing really going on here. This is the Rays and the uh, White Sox. Cats, like, I like that you're being cute with one another, but also, what is going on? Why? What did you get into, Archie? Are you, like, covered in some sort of weird fish oil? Like, in Tiger King? Is it just like you rolled in someone's landscaping that had fertilizer or whatever? Cats are weird. Pensacola and Rocket City. Uh, Orlando Martinez, older guy, Cuban, lefty stick outfielder, has performed in the low minors. Always has been a little bit old. Um, but, like, looks like he can hit. So I'm sort of on him, monitoring him. Angels list is coming up here soon, so paying attention to how he's doing. Uh, Peyton Burdick, two for five with a double and a triple. Dude with monster, monster, measurable raw power from Wright State. Uh, he's passed Cameron Meissner, who was like a famous college guy at Missouri who was drafted ahead of Burdick in 2019. Uh, so Burdick has passed him, but not performing at double A. Oh... Uh, Okay, that's it for double A. All right, so let's take a let's take a break here. Let's do um. This is some of my video that I've cut up and like pulled the last couple of weeks. It's not all sorted in here. Like um, you know, I went to see West Cath, a high school hitter from here in Arizona, uh, during the state championship game. Like he homered. He's probably gonna go in the second or third round, and I kind of dig him. Uh, but what I want to show you is let's go to the um, extended spring outing that I caught between Cleveland and Kansas City. You're going to see Noah Murdoch uh, for Kansas City. Noah Murdoch is a gigantic, like six foot six, skinny guy who uh, can't stay healthy. That's part of why he's 23 years old almost and is still an extended. Uh, in this video, he is basically sitting 94 to 96. His changeup and slider are both in the upper 80s. And I don't know if you'll see a curveball from him in this inning or not, but that's about 76. You'll know his curveball when you see it. Um, it's, it really stands apart from his other pitches, not because of its quality, but just because it's lack of velocity. Um, you know, he's very unbalanced and not very athletic for... Um, you know, like a pitcher in a vacuum for his size, it's uh, it's fine athleticism-wise. Like, you don't expect a lot of guys this size to be very athletic. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you can see this line here is an indication that, like, you look at the curveball and it spins a bunch and it has depth and stuff, but just because of his fastball's angle and shape... Um, the curveball doesn't really play. Like it's easy to identify out of his hand. It's not one of those up in the zone four seamers that that looks like a curveball, or that rather that the curveball looks like uh, until it starts to break. It is they are totally different out of his hand. Um, so uh, no Murdoch's one, and you'll see a bunch of the uh, the relevant Cleveland infielders or not infielders, but just like the draft picks from. Uh, last year, you'll see, I think, Petey Halpin, Carson Tucker, uh, Milan Tolentino, like some of the high schoolers from last year's draft. I think you might see Junior San Quintin as well in this video. He's definitely in the lineup. Um, so keep an eye out for those guys. And then, as I said, Jordan Stevens, who, uh, you know, was uh, a quick-moving college reliever from Rice who, like a lot of pitchers from Rice, uh, has been hurt 
and his velocity is like gone and he's older now by a considerable margin um and his 2021 20, inning from today as i'm recording this is not on here yet but he's in this outing too he's he's in the upper 80s low 90s um you know just kind of gutting it out trying to to get back there to where you know like i had a middle inning relief rate on this guy at one point and based on my look from this week uh you know that's that's probably not going to happen but um good luck to him it sucks that guys get injured pitching is so hard to deal with and so here's some video from uh, extended spring training
Salute, salute. Wow, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I'm already that So our mix coming out of the double A look is this group of guys and like Swarmer is going to get cut and like, you know, I got to check and see if Packy Naughton's Philo has rebounded and stuff. Like there's certain things that I got to do for some of those guys that's going to make it so that they don't end up in tomorrow's update, but they be belong in like the mix for sure. Okay. All right, hi A, Hudson Valley in Brooklyn. This is more like I think I'm used to seeing. Okay, oh for six night for Peraza, my boy in the top 100. I think I'm out on a limb having him on on the hundred, and I think I'm the only one. Uh, Josh Bro, two for three, hitting 156 though, bro is bro jose buto one of those like hey i think the mets really like this guy says people from other orgs who talk to the mets about trades like they really do not want to give this guy up five innings from him no walks five hits five strikeouts uh ronnie mauricio one for five brett Beatty had a big night the other night oh for four tonight hitting 365 though that's good for him Lake County Captains in the Great Lakes Loons. This is the Cleveland Indians and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Oh, try, try not to say Indians. Like, it is weird. What's the Louis C.K. bit? 
Hey, you guys Indians? No, we don't we don't know what that what that is. Ah, you're Indians. <laughs> is this India? I'm I'm Chris Columbus. Is this India? We're trying to get to India. No, uh ah, you're Indians. Pretty dumb. <laughs> Miguel Vargas two for four. It's a good bit though. Clayton Beater, uh, I guess he probably hit a pitch count here. Yeah, 25 pitches, that seems like a pitch count for him. Clayton Beater, monster stuff from Texas Tech, had one year of strike throwing in college, and it was four weeks long before the pandemic shut things down. Andrew Shaps, this is another one where it's like, huh, Andrew Shaps, huh? Shaps was, uh, you know, it says William Jessup College here, but really he was Arizona State. Um, and they got kicked off the team for fighting with the coach's son. The coach's son wasn't even on the team. Coach's son was just in the locker room and got in a fight with Shafts. I think that, you know, Shafts maybe had a team suspension for weed or something like that. And if that's not true, I'm sorry. Like, it's weed. It's legal here in Arizona now. Like, as soon as I'm done recording, I think I'm going to have some. But, like, uh, you know, he had a problem with the coaching staff. And some of that, you know, he could have been immature or just maybe was not the right mix. Like... But anyway, he was an outfielder at that time. That's the point. That's what I'm trying to get to, is that he was an outfielder, but he's pitching now. Um, he could certainly throw the crap out of the ball from the outfield, but I've never seen this guy pitch. So um, he's pitching four games, though, and has you know four punch outs in three innings. So Andrew Shapps is maybe a name to keep an eye on. Just if he's got a one-year, like, here he comes, you know, converted arm, uh, then that might be interesting. Coming out of, like, quarantine you know you've a whole year to get in the lab and polish your stuff up for the for the field Asheville and Greenville Alec McKenna West Coast uh, contact oriented outfielder here in the Houston system two for four slow start for a guy who's into his mid-20s at this point still in a ball Corey Lee first rounder from 2019 catcher from Cal three for five hitting 318 let's see and Manuel Valdez homered in this game stocky middle infield type guy another one of those like hey he's 20 and he's built like this already that's kind of scary um but uh you know shifting kind of keeps those guys alive tank esplin this is an adonis with real power and um punch out issues tyler esplin that's right uh Salucci, how's Salucci doing? This was not a good outing for him. Brandon Salucci, uh, another like, this guy's got stuff that was made in a lab and looked incredible for a little while. Yeah, isn't, yeah, all right. Certainly, you know, four innings, he's given up six runs. It's not the best, but uh, but that's okay. Seven strikeouts in four innings. This is an interesting sleeper in the Red Sox system. Folks can go to the Go to the board, check it out. I don't know, I'm going to spend a lot of time on, on him right now. Winston-Salem and Jersey Shore down the shore. Destino shouldn't be here, but whatever. Yes, is 2 for 5. You know, we've seen him have multi-hit games in the box scores, but still hitting a buck 70. Uh, Johan Dominguez, good start, but not a lot of punchies. Who's this Hughes character? And is this Anuri Sabala? Has he found his way here? Yeah, this guy used to throw really hard. It was like up to 100 with the Mariners back in these days when I first moved to Arizona. We'll see him a bunch. Then he kind of kicked around Cincinnati, the Dodgers. Um, via trade, I think he was. See. James Marinan and Zabala for Dylan Floro, Zach Neal. Well, good for the Dodgers in that one, right? Marinan was like physically mature high school arm, sinker slider. Zabala was soft bodied upper 90s, and that was sort of it. Dodgers should have chased DeYoung to Seattle for Zabala and Drew Jackson. I think this was like, you know, DeYoung is a seventh starter. Uh, Drew Jackson was, you know, seven arm can play short, and that was sort of it. This is how these guys kick around. You see him 
you know, in 2015 or whatever, when I saw this guy for the first time, or 2014, maybe more likely, when I first moved to Arizona, and he's 18 years old and he's sitting like 97. I was just like, dear God, this guy's going to be a closer, and he just doesn't like this gets in the way, you know. When you're two, 260 pounds at 18 years old. All right, so Jonathan Hughes, Georgia Tech 2020. This is wrong. Yeah, this draft info is wrong. Yeah, all right. Well, he's got 10 walks and 12 innings, so I'm moving on. Lansing and Fort Wayne. This is, uh, now it's the A's and the Padres still. This used to be Blue Jays. This is tripping me up. Both these teams are hovering around 500. Michael Goldberg's in the three hole here now. This guy can really run. Uh, his wrists are very quick. He's not a big guy, but he is sneaky. Kind of like this guy, Michael Goldberg, from the 2020 draft. Saw a bunch of him this spring. Uh, Ival Raza, 2-5 at the top of the Fort Wayne order. Can't roll my R's. I try, but I can't do it. Uh, okay. Bowling Green in Rome. 12-6 and six Bowling Green. This is still the the Rays, and Rome is the Braves. They're the Brave, Rome Braves. Little Pedro Martinez, 2-4. for four. He's from the Cubs. It is not the son of that Pedro Martinez, although that there is a kid named Pedro Martinez who is the son of Pedro Martinez. This is a different Pedro Martinez. Okay, nothing really going on. In these box scores, Tanner Dotson, you know, interesting to watch, to continue to monitor him. He's hitting a little bit and pitching still. This is a two-way guy from Cal who closed and played center field at Cal. Did not do anything during the 2020 season uh, because of elbow stuff didn't have surgery maybe he had prp i don't know if he did or not um but did nothing during the season so to see how he does you know it's 21 ab abs he's not really done anything at all hitting he struck out half the time um but uh you know it's like mid to upper 90s on the mound with power breaking ball when he's right and he's he's put up some some outings like this which are very encouraging so Rooting for this guy. I don't know if it's going to happen for him as a two-way guy. He can run, so maybe there's utility for him, but it's probably not like he's legit playing two, two-way or anything like that. Wilmington and Aberdeen. Wilmington is the Nationals, Aberdeen, the Oreos, uh, Yasiel Antuna, one for six. Really, really, really terrible start for him. Hoping that he rebounds because I was pretty pretty heavy on him coming into the year. Cade Cavalli, another pretty good outing. College arm from Oklahoma, their first rounder last year. Definitely, um, definitely a good prospect with with a scary delivery and an injury history from before his junior year at Oklahoma, which was very short. It was just the pre shutdown times. Uh, so the track record of, of him staying healthy is just not really there. His delivery scary. Uh, South Bend Dayton, this is the Reds, right? Reds, yeah, yeah. And uh, the Cubs, Jacob Hurt to two for four, hit 273, two punch outs tonight, though. Mike Ciani, uh, 0 for three, has had some arm issues. Uh, Yuri Ramos, another one of the young kids who's throwing super duper hard for the Cubs all of a sudden, was 97 99. My first look at him this spring, 95 97. And my second look at him this spring, secondary stuff was solid, not great. Chase Strumpf, what, what's this guy doing in A ball, Cubs? He's hitting 343. He's a college shortstop from UCLA. He's like, you know, a first round guy. Like, let's go. What's this about? It's like fucking A ball. All right, Western Michigan and Wisconsin. Torkelson 0 for 1 and then removed. Let's see what happened with that. <sighs> Left hamstring tightness. What I really need, and this is Jason Beck here. Okay. Good job, Jason Beck. Um, so, 
you know, KG, you'll have to vouch for me, but yeah, like, I remarked to him the other day over the phone, like, that Torkelson really had started his last year at ASU, and I didn't think it was going to be a long-term issue, but it maybe has become one, is that his lower half is super tight-looking. And uh, it was impacting his ability to, to like... get to balls at the bottom of the strike zone. So like this is him as an underclass and there's just more flex in the lower half. Oh my God, that's such a great swing. I'm gonna turn the volume on here. Um, uh, you can just see like what he's built like here and I'm gonna fast forward to it. Closer to the end. He's just super tight in the lower half. You can see how big his thighs are here. Oh my god, he gets the shit out of this. Um, but towards the end, I'm gonna slow, actually, what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna slow it down. It's plenty slow here, Eric. Um, he was really getting beat by breaking balls down here. He couldn't flex in the lower half at all to kind of adjust the depth of the barrel. You can see, look, he can pull his hands in here to get the barrel onto this pitch uh, closer to the middle of the zone. Right, like he's pulling his hands in good, but it's stuff lower than this threshold that, again, like just in, the, in those four weeks, stuff down here where my cursor is was like, he couldn't lay off it, but he couldn't touch it. And he just looked tight down here. And now he's got a hamstring issue and is out the gates really slow. Um, so I'm kind of concerned about him, actually. Like, you could say, oh, it's so early and he's going to be fine. Like, he did nothing but hit at ASU. And he did. But the visual evaluation started to change. And then we didn't have a chance to see if that was going to impact his performance at all because of the, of the COVID shutdown. Um, so I don't know what to think about Torque right now. I mean, I don't think he sucks, but like, I'm kind of wor I'm actually kind of worried about him. Like, when I would 95% of the time tell my readers, like, don't sweat this. It's super early. This guy's pedigree is what it is for a reason. Like, I watched this guy for three years. He did nothing but rake, and all that stuff is true. But there is something happening with him physically. Uh, and now you've seen it manifest in him having to come off the field because his hamstrings are tight. And that's what I've been seeing. Is like This guy's lower half is thick and tight, and it's impacting what he can and can't hit in the box now. And now he's hurt. All right. Quad Cities and Peoria. Quad Cities 13-4. and four. Uh, Jason Guzman, a guy who I stuffed pretty good on the, um, the Royals list. Uh... You know, like, here, basically. It's almost 1 a.m. It's well after 1 a.m. <laughs> there is, like, a little girl who rides her skateboard through the neighborhood during the day, but, like, if that's her, it sounds like her board, but, like, it's late for her to be out. Uh, but yeah, Jason Guzman, I dig this guy, so, 2-4 the bomb, switch hitting, uh, shorts up with this sweet glove, like, I'm in on him. Alright, so now Drew Parrish and Asa Lacey have been split up here, um, they were piggybacking, but now they have changed that, so that's notable. Looks like Chamberlain's going to be built up slow on an innings count. He was drafted as a starter. I assume that they'll want him to start eventually, but I don't think that he'll, he will long term, but I think that you want to try to develop him as one if you can. Uh, but interesting to know that Drew Parrish, he's like a change up pitch ability guy from Florida State, um, is not piggybacking with Lacey anymore. So Hickory and Greensboro, this is the Pirates, right? Yeah, Pirates and the Rangers still. This is, which Acosta is this? Maximo was at extended. All right, so it's Jose Acosta. 
Oh, that's right. Bill texted me about this. So Costa was an extended spring. Keenan Irizarry, who I like, uh, was an extended spring. And both of them, Acosta busts his ass. He's a, he's a hardworking young kid. Um, and Irizarry is like short to the ball, sneaky pull pop. Uh, I kind of dig him. He's an interesting sleeper. But nothing really going on in this box score. Just interesting that those guys got promoted. Ronnie Enriquez with a pretty good start. Not a lot of strikeouts, but still a good start for him. Nothing really doing in the rest of the box score. So here's Beloit and Cedar Rapids. Well, Banfield two for five, hitting a buck twenty. Uh, this is the Marlins and the Twins, by the way. Cameron Meissner, that outfield that I was talking about from from Missouri, who Peyton, Peyton Burdick could pass by over four. Let's, uh, let's see. Yeah, nothing else really happening here. Ten hits, ten runs for Beloit, but no one really crushed it. Griffin Conine home run. Who's the Reedy kid? Two bombs for him. Nick Reedy, 2019, 23rd round from Air Force. Oh, yeah. That's right. Okay. Brain fart on a four corners guy. You know, Michael Hellman, two hits last night. He's a sleeper who the Twins, the Twins liked internally for a little while. Smaller, you know, like uh, le their 11th round guy from 2018 who came out and hit initially. Uh, after the draft, um, he's hitting here again, but like you can't have a 25 year old in high A ball. I mean, you can, but like, I'm going to be skeptical until he starts getting pushed. Vancouver and Hillsboro. Uh, this is, um, Jays and D backs. Uh, yeah, the Schultz kid, another good start for him. Paxton Schultz. He's had a bunch of good starts. Dre Jameson, a good start. He should be pushed too, please. Six innings, six strikeouts for him. He's well represented on the D-backs list. People should go check that out. There's a, there's also been good stuff written about Dre Jameson, um, like human interest stuff that people should check out. Uh, he was homeless for a while. So, yeah, he's kind of a, he's a tough guy. Eugene in Tri-Cities. This is uh, Gigantes. And Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, the Angels. Angels. All right. So nothing really happened in this box score. Well, no, that's not true. Kai Wei Tang, who they got from the Twins in that trade, that I, you know, the Twins, I don't think that anyone likes Tang very much like they think he's okay he's like a back-end starter type guy because he is like I think the dev guys are kind of like hey you you're a pro athlete like maybe take care of your body please um <laughs> this guy doesn't seem to maybe he's just sort of built that way but uh you know his stuff is okay a monster outing last night 11 punch outs um Who's the king guy? Who's the king guy? Dylan King from Belmont. I don't know anything about this guy. Bunch of walks. Okay. And then Everett and Spokane. This is our final high A matchup before we get to the low A slate. Caden Polkovich, two for four with two walks. I wrote about him last week, so I'm not going to do it again. Uh, Zach Deloach with a home run, one for three, two walks, just a bad outing for the, the Rockies Spokane group, a lot of walks, um, Shunk one for three, Brenton Doyle, who I do really like, uh, two for three with a walk, not a lot of power tonight though, so he will not make the right up, so we've sort of, we had, it was on a good pack for us, so to speak. Uh, the pack of high A games. Let's go to our low A dudes. Pull up a savant. Uh, savant box score game feed thinger. Savant box score game feed thinger. 
All right, Fort Myers in Tampa. This is Twins Yankees. Edouard Julien over two with three walks. Guy who was like a bad only type of prospect from Auburn, Canadian kid. Had a good college career until close to the end. Um, then had like a rough draft year and was maybe going to go back to school, but the Twins did the work and figured him to be signable and, and got a deal done. Uh, Anthony Volpe, first round shortstop from New Jersey, glove first guy, double and homer. Two for five with a double and homer is good. Let's see how hard he hit those double and homer. Yeah, why did you done him? I don't know who that is. He, he hit a ball <laughs> pretty hard. <laughs> Volpe, man, 107. I'd be lying if I told you I thought that was in there. I thought it would be more like this. Aaron Sabato, speaking of guys whose bodies look like they've gone to heck. Casey Legumina throwing hard. Let's see what else is going on. Pitch below wise here. Casey Legumina. Four and a third, eight strikeouts for him. I think that's the second time this year we've seen his name in a box score with like a big, big boy K number next to it. 18 punch outs and 10 and a third. Five, two, three ERA so far. Uh, but yeah, the peripherals are pretty strong. wonder what's going on there. There were a couple hard throwing guys from Gonzaga the last couple of years. Uh, Legumina and then Nick Trogerlick Iverson. It was like Nick Iverson in a junior college here in Arizona for the longest time. Um, who were interesting and just like were also very frustrating. And I wonder if like I have to talk to some, pardon me, Northwest guys about it. But I wonder if like maybe Gonzaga is not very good at developing arms. Could be true. Uh, anything else interesting going on here? Like Legumina is really spinning it. Randy Vasquez has always really been able to spin it, which is why he's been like a sleeper on the Yankees list the last couple of years. Folks can go to the site to read more about him, Randy Vasquez. I mean, like basically what I told you is what he is, is like a little lefty with a hook. Um, yeah, really just like Legumina throwing hard. We have swinging strikes, guys. Swings and misses. Legumina, Sean Mooney. Okay. I get it. Okay, Columbia and Kannapolis. This is uh, still the Mets. No, this is Kansas City now and the White Sox. It's the same. 2-16 and 16 start for the Cannonballers. Uh, so there's a metaphor there. Okay, Archie's still on the wall. LT Tolbert, 2-4, for four, off to a really slow start. Looked good during the spring to me, though. Not a lot going on in the box score here. So we're going to move on. Lakewood and Bradenton, wow. Or excuse me, Lakeland, not Lakewood. Uh, is this on the device as well? I don't know. We're getting a lot of exit velos if it is. <laughs> hey, how about that? 20 to 7. Michael Escado hit a ball 108. Gage Workman, uh, the third baseman at ASU. Pepperin, the leaderboard from this game as well. Oliver Mateo. Throwing super hard. Adrian Florencio high on the swing and miss radar again. So Florencio. Carlos Guzman we've seen here. This might be a game for me to wake up early tomorrow and watch. What else do we have going on tomorrow? Rangers list. What kind of the Rangers list? Any crazy spin here? Mateo curveball. All right, so this guy can spin it and throw super hard, and is not. He's zero swings and misses. <laughs> Did this guy come in and just walk everybody? Is that what happened here? Is he, is he the culprit? Yeah. All right, so the Florencio guy though continues to perform. Um, so between him and like, and this is probably a hellish game to watch. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we learned anything from watching this game just because of how bad it was. Salem and Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg 1 and 17. Some of these teams are real bad. Real bad. 
some of the, you know, to an extent, like if, if you've got a team in the minors that's playing like this, like something about your orgs being exposed. Shouldn't be happy. Shouldn't be this bad, yo. Okay. Matthew Lugo, two for six. Nick North, North cut two for five. Just, you know, another just offensive onslaught here. The Frederick team is bad. I don't know what else to say. I'm just going to move on. It, like, sucks to look at this box score and, like, just discount everything that's happening over here because this team is bad. All right, Delmarva in Carolina. Big night for a couple of the guys at the top of the Delmarva lineup. Hudson Haskins and Jordan Westberg both homered. Uh, Sir Video double, doubled. Haskin doubled as well. Haskin would be interesting to, to look at video and see if his swing has already changed because it was ugly in college. Caden Lemons, they did most of their damage off of him. I saw Caden Lemons this spring and, uh, you know, his VLO is still like 87, 89. So he was a big, like, ultra projectable high schooler from Tennessee who just has never really developed VLO. Fayetteville and Augusta. Uh, and Augusta is the Braves, and Fayetteville is the Astros. Nothing really happening here. Who's the DePaula? Brian DePalma? Did I write DePaula up? 13 walks and 13 innings, though. Maybe he's on the Astros list as an honorable mention. I don't remember if I wrote him up or not. I can't recall. Anything happened over here? Vaughn Grissom, two for four. He's hitting well. That's a good sign. Vaughn Grissom. High school kid picked a couple drafts ago. Uh, just is that, you know, like, physical... Projectable, like second tier type of that, that type of prospect. Myrtle Birch, Myrtle Birch, Myrtle Birch and Leechburg. Uh, it's one thirty. <laughs> Easton Santana one for four, hitting a buck sixty-seven. That's it. I'm still all in on this guy. Uh, nothing else really going on. That's interesting there. Stockton and Visalia. Tyler Sodersham, three for four, hitting 320. Pitching lines are just, you know, whatever. Visalia is the D backs. Oakland over here on the left. San Jose and Fresno. This is the Giants and the Rockies. Luciano's off to a bit of a slow start. Ricardo Genovi's a guy I really like. He's he's strong on the the Giants list. Three for four with a homer and a double. So he's going to enter the mix. Luis Matos, one for five. Man, this is loaded lineup, dude. If you get a chance to see San Jose, folks, go do it. They are loaded. Uh, Fresno. Mateo Gill, three for four. He and, how's he doing? I mean, the batting average looks good. Veen hitting toward the bottom of this order is kind of scary. Mateo Gill. So Mateo Gill and Ellie Harris Montero were acquired in the Arenado deal. I mean, that deal was widely panned, and rightfully so. I don't think especially highly of either two of those guys. I do think that they are prospects, but I don't think that they're excellente. Um, but, like, they are both off, off to to solid starts. So, so far, I am wrong. Uh, down East and Charleston. Evan Carter over 2-2 two, two walks. He's going to do a lot of this. Um, what the quality of contact is going to be like, I am a little bit more skeptical of. It is like a sweeping slasher, like line drive swing. I don't know if there's... I don't, I, I, based on what I've seen, I don't think there's going to be like impact power there. Um... I'm going to, you know, 45 him on the, the Rangers list. 
and like medium variants him, I do think he's likely to have some sort of utility. Like um, the look I've had at him is, is pretty good, but do I think he's going to be like some sort of crazy stud or anything like that? No, not based on what I've seen. Okay, Modesto. Actually, who else? Let me just take one more peek at the down east guys because I'm writing this list now. So Dustin Harris is a sleeper I like too. Excuse me, I had the hiccups earlier today. Now they're coming back. Luis Angel Acuna, you know, I'm a low man on him. I think that he's a, a 40. Um, he's not hitting. So that's one that I'm right about so far. Modesto and Inland Empire. This Victor Labrada, Cuban guy who signed a couple weeks ago, not uh, real familiar with him, but I talked to someone who saw him play, like uh, a scout, a couple pro scouts actually, um, just happened to be in the same place at the, at the same time. And Kylie was there too. Kylie was was in California to see amateur guys and caught some Cal League stuff and saw Labrada. Uh, he did not mention Labrada to me though, but yeah, like Cuban guy plays really hard, seven runner, and he's performing. Um, squat body, you know, soft, like little bowling ball type guy, but, uh, but he's, but he plays hard. He's fast and, and, and he's hitting so far. So, um, keep an eye on that guy. Noel B. Marte DHing. O for night for him. Damon Cassetta Stubbs, the second start in a row where he's kind of struggled. I have him projected in relief. Jupiter and Daytona. Not a lot going on in the Daytona dudes. Nassim Nunez, two for five. This is MD Johnson again. I guess I kind of have to check on MD Johnson, don't I? He's had a couple dandy starts now. He's really 23. Like, when? What's going to happen? Like, am I, am I 50, 50 years old all of a sudden? What happened? MD Johnson's 23. <laughs> This game was on the track man, right? Daytona. Do they have track man? No stack cast, okay. Uh maybe it's not track man. I might be misspeaking every time I say that, by the way. It might be a Hawkeye. Uh, okay. Lake Elsinore and Rancho Cucamonga. Robert Hassel, two for five. Josh Mears doubled, Yordi Barley doubled. Jared Dale and Hassel both tripled. Quintero homered. Brandon Lewis, three for six. He's only hitting 250. He's an older, like, small school guy, but it's still a college guy at low A, so that's not the best. Your beat Vivas came off the bench in this one. One for two. Diminutive little second baseman, I dig. Uh, and that's it. Okay, so here are our candidates for the night. It's 1.32 a.m. West Coast time. Uh, I am probably gonna call it a night and right in the morning, I think it'll maybe let me text some people about like how some of the arms looked last night. Cause I, I'm not going to tell you who and where, but a couple of these guys, I know folks who are in to see these clubs. Um, and so maybe I can get some fresh dope on some of them. Uh, but this is a group, as always, like, professional baseball is really hard, and everybody who played tonight is fucking exceptional, and thank you guys for playing and dealing with, like, not being paid a lot and having to travel and, like, live meager lives while you, you know, do this, this vocation and, like, this sort of, um, pilgrimage or, or, or journey or whatever, like, you know, baseball players, thank you, um. Any, anybody who works in baseball, as always, like, thanks a lot for for doing this, you know, um, and giving us something to, to think and talk about. 